So last year in November, I published this video where I built a JavaScript game that teaches people how to make different pasta shapes from scratch. A lot of you liked the idea of creating games where you can explore the creative side of programming. I asked you guys if you wanted to see a part two of that video and a lot of you not only said yes, but also gave me some amazing ideas to implement. So let's get started. In the part one, I was not able to finish even the first level of this game. So I'm going to try to finish at least the first level. And lastly, I'm going to deploy this game on Hostinger, who are also the sponsors of this video. Hostinger provides you a world-class hosting platform for all your website hosting needs. Whether you're starting a blog, launching your portfolios, or building the next big startup, having a fast and reliable website is very important. And that's where Hostinger comes in. It's affordable without compromising on quality and has blazing fast servers with a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. Hostinger is also upfront about their renewal charges, so no surprises like some companies that charge you two times at renewal. Plus, they also offer 24-7 customer support and a 30-day money-back guarantee so that you can get started without any risks. If you're ready to take your websites live and you're looking for a fast and reliable yet affordable platform for your hosting needs then you can check out Hostinger using the link in the description box below and make sure to use my coupon code code dose for an additional 10% off let me show you what I was able to build in the last video so I'm using this framework called phaser JS so your game basically comprises of different scenes right now I have two scenes in my game the first one is the main menu that lists down all of the levels all the art that you see over here was actually created with the help of of mid journey one problem with ai art was that i was not able to create animations with them so if i create the animation art myself then that art is not going to be consistent with the ai art results so the first thing that i'm going to do right now is to redo all of these assets and draw them myself on my ipad I'm using the Procreate app for drawing these assets. I'm not reimagining the assets all over. Instead, I'm using the AI art as inspiration and basically just transforming that AI art into my own art style. Let me tell you a little bit about how these individual assets actually make up the game. So you draw these different assets and when you are setting up your scenes in Phaser, you place these individual assets onto the canvas. So for example, here I have created this background. So first of all, I add this background image onto my canvas. Then I am adding all of these individual ingredients on top of the background. So I place the egg carton and on top of the egg carton, I'm placing these individual eggs. In order to add animations to your phaser games, you make use of something known as sprite sheets. So a sprite sheet basically contains all of the different frames that your animation. For example, here I have created this pouring animation. The first step is to think of the animation as different frames. For example, the first frame here simply has the spoon inside of this jar. In the next frame, I have moved the spoon slightly out of the jar. Similarly, in the successive frames, I have progressively moved this spoon out of the jar. Then in order to create the pouring effect, I used an actual spoon from my kitchen and I recreated these different angles of the spoon. The next step that I did was to export these individual frames as PNGs and then I placed them together onto my sprite sheet. 
when you're loading the spreadsheet you give the dimensions of individual frames as a config so when you actually play this animation what's happening is phaser uses your spreadsheet to extract different frames and then it plays those frames one after another using the specified frame rate so here's the final result here's how my pouring animation is now looking like This is such an improvement over the previous version. So there's this one comment on my last video that actually inspired me to change my game from a levels based game to a storyline based game. So I kept to the storyline part and I kept to the grandma part from this comment. And now when the game begins, there is this monologue by your grandma. I have named her Nona Maria. I took suggestions from ChatGPT about what would be some nice warm names for an Italian grandmother. So basically, she is the one who is teaching you how to make these different handmade pasta shapes throughout the game. So I created this nice character for this grandma and I went one step ahead, generated some dialogues for her using AI. So I'm using this tool called 11labs.io and I chose this Italian voice that I felt would suit my character and I raised the pitch a little bit just to give it like a cartoonish feeling. And this is how my game is looking so far. You've arrived just in time. Making pasta by hand is not just cooking. It's art, it's tradition, it's love. Now, let me show you how we bring life to flour and eggs. Are you ready? Don't worry, I'll teach you every step. Pausing the game here because I want to talk about this bug that I came across and I was not able to figure it out. So basically, when the dialogue is running, the animation for the grandma speaking is also running. What I want to do is as soon as the dialogue stops, I want the animation to also stop and reset to a frame where the mouth is closed. So this thing is working in other parts of the game, but for some reason it's not working at this point here, even though all of the code is the same or at least I think it is. So just putting it out there in case you're curious, you can check out the code and maybe help me out with it. Welcome to my kitchen, my little chef. Today we begin your pasta journey with something simple, but oh so delicious, fettuccine. You've heard of it, no? Long ribbon-like pasta, perfect with any sauce. My nonna always said, if you can make fettuccine, you can conquer the world. So let's start your conquest, eh? First, we make the dough. Take some flour, just a nice mound on the table. Now make a little well in the middle, like a tiny volcano, perfect for cracking the eggs into. Don't be shy now. Now it's time for the eggs. Crack the eggs gently, like you're handling a newborn chick. No shell pieces, eh? We don't want crunchy pasta. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. Now use your fork to gently mix the eggs. to get your hands dirty. Knead the dough like it owes you rent. Push, fold and turn. Feel it. It should be smooth like a bambino's cheek. Once 
one more thing here so this kneading animation that you're seeing over here i was not sure how to implement the task of kneading so i asked you guys in the last video if you had any suggestions for me and this comment was such a lifesaver for me so i checked out this game called cooking mama and i tried to figure out how they are doing animations for not only kneading the dough but also for whisking the eggs so thanks a lot for that suggestion Bravo. You kneaded that dough like a true pasta master. But listen, even dough needs a little nap. If you try to roll it out now, it will fight back like a stubborn mule. Wrap it up nice and cozy. Let it rest for at least 30 minutes. This gives the gluten time to relax, just like you should. Now, the real fun begins. Grab your rolling pin. Roll the dough out nice and thin, like a sheet of paper. Ah, now we make the magic happen. Fold the dough carefully, like a love letter. At last, take your knife and cut beautiful even strips. Unfold those strips and look. That's your fettuccine. It's like little ribbons of happiness. If they're a bit uneven, we call it rustic, eh? You did it. Your first fettuccine. Aren't you proud? My nonna would be. Just remember, pasta is life, and now you're living it. Now, if anyone tells you their pasta is better, tell them nonna taught you. That will settle it, eh? Now I'm going to move on to the next phase of this game, which is deploying it so that you guys can actually interact with it. So I'm going to use Hostinger for hosting my project. In case you are also interested in learning about how to host your own personal projects, then I'll just give you a quick tutorial. You can check out Hostinger using the link in the description box below. So right now I am on the home page. You have a couple of different options for hosting over here. If you are looking for a WordPress project, you can check out their WordPress hosting services or website hosting services but today i am going to specifically focus on their vps hosting service currently there is some sale going on on their platform and you can also use my coupon code for an additional 10 percent off so i'm going to use their kvm1 plan for hosting my game you can choose a plan that is appropriate for your own projects for example if this is the plan that suits you then you can click on choose plan while checking out you can apply my coupon code over here code those and this is going to give you an additional discount you can choose your billing period from here one month 12 months or 24 months however my coupon code is only applicable for 12 months or more and at the checkout page itself you'll be able to see the renewal price after your current period ends once you log into your account you'll be able to find your hosting on the home page or you can also click on vps so i've already set it up but i'll take you through the entire process once again when you set it up for the first time the ui might look a little bit different so they have a bunch of different options for the operating system that you want to use on your server you can choose the one that you are already familiar with or the one that suits the requirements of your project under the application tab you have operating systems with a bunch of different dependencies already installed so that you can get started quite easily for example if you're looking to deploy your modern stack project you can choose the modern stack from here so this comes with mongodb express.js react and node.js my current project is not using the mon stack but let me know if you are interested in watching a quick tutorial about the mon stack as well i can make another video on that because in the last video i created my very first mon stack project i can show you guys how to deploy your mon stack projects as well but today i'm going to go ahead with plain ubuntu i've already hosted my project but now i'm going to show you a fresh setup from the beginning 
Once you've set your password, it might take a few minutes to get your VPS started. Now that my VPS is set up, let's get started with deploying the project. So you can either connect to your server with the help of SSH or you can directly interact with it using the browser terminal, which is what I'm going to do over here. I need to install a bunch of different dependencies in order to make it work. So I'm going to update the system packages. Now that's done, I am going to install Node and NPM. You can check if these were installed properly by logging their versions. So Node hyphen V and npm hyphen V. I'll need to install one last thing, which is engine X for the server. Next, I'm going to clone my project's repository. Now I'm going to install the dependencies for my project. So npm install. The dependencies are installed. Let's create a production build. This is going to create a dist folder inside of which all of my project's build files will be present. Now I'm going to copy all of the files from within this dist folder to this path over here. So this is the public directory that is used by Nginx for serving our project files. So moving this will allow Nginx to access these build files as well as serve them. One more thing, we need to update the permissions for these files. Let's see if Nginx is running or not. It is running. Let's also enable our Nginx server to run every single time this server is booted. And now I should be able to access my game on this IP address. Ah, Benny, you arrived just in time, making pasta. So there you go. As you can see here inside of my dashboard, under the KPM1 plan, you have 50 GB of total storage and 4 TBs of total monthly bandwidth. You can upgrade your plan if you're looking for more resources. Even though this is not the end for this project, but we have reached the ending of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the process of me building this game. Maybe you even watched this video alongside you building your own projects. Once again, you can check out Hostinger for hosting your own projects using the link in the description box below. Let me know if you want me to create a part three of this video where I'll be adding a scoring system and maybe I'll get to work on the level two of this game. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.